Hey guys, thank you so much for your purchase of this course on how to build your own headache rack. I hope this course is super easy to follow, beneficial, and I'm confident that the final product is going to look awesome for you guys. So I'm just going to go over a couple things before we start that's going to make your life easier, as well as go over all the tools that you're going to need during this process. The first thing that I would recommend doing is printing out a physical copy of your blueprint. Um, this course is meant to be go hand in hand with the blueprint and it's going to be a lot easier if you have a physical copy printed out that you can reference during the process. There's going to be times when I'm going to say refer to your blueprint for certain measurements, etc. So if there's ever a time where you're unclear on, you know, the length a piece should be, the angles you're supposed to cut it at, that kind of thing, refer to your blueprint. It's going to lay it out in there clearly and it should be very easy to follow. The next thing is we're just going to go over the safety equipment you're going to need. So first and foremost, you're going to need earplugs and safety glasses. Um, just protects your eyes and ears. Also a welding helmet, obviously, you use for when you're welding. Um, welding gloves so you don't burn yourself. And some sort of welding coat. This is an actual um, heat, heat resistant cotton, but I mean just some sort of protective clothing so that when you're welding uh, you don't burn your skin off. Next, um, the, the first thing that's going to make your job easier is some sort of work table. As you can see here, mine is an open work table. It's just an outer frame with a few cross members. If you had a solid work table, that will work. Um, it's going to be a little easier to have an open table as the one shown here because you can clamp at, on any part of the table. You can't just clamp around the edges. So um, if you don't have a work table, this would, might be a good time to start and build your own as this is going to be handy down the road as well. So if you don't have any sort of work table at all, you might take some time to build something simple like this. I mean, this, would, this is a couple hour project, not too expensive. But if you already have a work table that's closed, I mean, that will work too. So um, obviously you're gonna need a welder. So I have a Lincoln 255, which is a pretty heavy duty machine. But as long as your welder is capable of welding 3 16 plate adequately, which most of the 110 machines should be able to do that, you're gonna be just fine. You're also going to need a bandsaw, or at least have access to a bandsaw. If you don't have access to one, it's not the end of the world, as wherever you buy your metal at is either going to be a fab shop or a steeler, steel dealer, and more than likely they can cut all your pieces that you're going to need. If you just take your blueprint down to them, they should be able to cut out everything you need. If you have your own um, and you're going to cut your own pieces, just something this size is totally capable. Uh, it just has to be able to handle two and a half inch tubes. So your standard small bandsaw like this is going to get the job done. Next thing you're going to need is um, your standard angle grinder. So I mean, I just have a four and a half inch DeWalt angle grinder here. Um, you're going to need one of those. You're going to need a tape measure, obviously, for measuring your pieces. You're also going to need two sets of vice grips. Four is going to be optimal. And if you have C-clamps instead of vice grips, they're interchangeable. So you're going to need to have at least two sets of clamps of some sort. I use vice grips. But again, if you have C-clamps, you know, something like this, that will work totally fine too. So at least two of those, four is going to be optimal. You need to have a square um, just for, for getting things square. You're also going to need to have a way of drilling holes. It could either be a hand drill like this one or a little easier way is if you have a drill press. You're going to need a quarter inch drill bit for drilling the mounting holes on your rack. And if you are putting marker lights in your rack, you're going to need a three quarter inch drill bit. Um, but that again, that's only if you're going to be putting marker lights. Lastly, you're going to need two different type of grinder wheels. You're going to need flap discs, which are used for sanding off your welds nice and smooth. So the most common type of flap disc is type 29, which your sanding surface is going to be angled towards the outside. You're going to want to get type 27 flap discs because they are flat and they provide the nicest grind surface. You're going to be able to grind it nice and flat and smooth and get a professional looking product. So if you don't have type 27 flap discs, I would recommend getting a couple as uh, they just make much more professional looking grinds than the type 29 do. And lastly, you're going to need a way to cut metal. And the most basic way that can get everything you need to get done is a cutting wheel for your grinder. So this just goes right on my grinder and cuts metal with it. These are like 25 cents a piece. So um, if you don't have a plasma cutter, then this will do everything we need it to do. I'm, in fact, I'm going to be showing you how to do everything with a slitter disc just because this is the tool everyone has. If you have a plasma cutter or a cutting torch, you can use that in replacement of this. It's going to make it a little easier. But again, I'm going to be showing you how to do everything with the 
the cut and wheel. So anyways, I hope, I hope this course is extremely beneficial for you guys. We're going to move on now to getting your materials together.